that Kelly is very non-dogmatic. Here's a guy that could easily be a multi, multi, multi millionaire. And he has no desire to be. He lives out here, there's no electric. He gets totally off the grid, you see. And this is how he prefers to live. But he drives to town to his real estate office and does his thing. He studies, he studies hard, he wants his master's in theology. But he doesn't want to be a preacher. But he goes into church and talks to the preacher and then the preacher preaches about what Kelly says. You see, no dogma, no dogma. Kelly could do a lot and Kelly will do a lot. I mean, he's about as close to a holy guy that lives out in the woods as you'll ever meet. Uh, so, you know, it's a nice thing. But he's a living principle of this card. Complete to the hermit pot. Complete to the hermit pot. But he doesn't carry the light. He doesn't need the light. He doesn't need the light. He lives out here by himself. His wife comes for two weeks every two or three months. Then he sends it back to the kids. So that's the principle of this heth. The principle of seeking self within higher self. Seeking self outside of physical need. All your physical needs will be supplied. You may not have a Lexus, but you'll have an automobile. All your physical needs will be supplied if you just continue to try and stay in balance and seek self. That's the principle of this card. Mm. That's the principle of this concept. If the principle is do no harm. Hey, questions, questions about this concept. Right. Uh, Kundalini, if, if you go to the Eastern Method, you remember when he dealt, uh, he dealt with that there, Yana, Yana Yoga, in, in, in the book, that, that's the yoga of thought. That's the yoga of thought in the Eastern philosophies. Yes, it's definitely Kundalini. So you're doing the breath work and stuff like that. It, it, virtually no Hatha involved. Uh, it's, it's the yoga's Yujana. In order, the same way you would pray, they use that meditation form in, in order to, to try and achieve contact with their mental body, astral body. So yeah, that's 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 correct. But whenever you deal with the serpent, you always have to remember the Ouroboros. It's, it's the serpent that eating itself, that's biting its own tail. See, so there's a uh, the serpent can be very positive if dealt with as the power within you. That's what he's talking about when he says it's easy to achieve your power. You know, it's easy to achieve your power. You go out, you invest, you do this, you do that, and you achieve material power. And it, it's, it's relatively easy to do. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you run into hard times like Sandra is having right now. But uh, it, the power of the physical is not capable of giving you spiritual enlightenment. Uh, no matter which religion or holy book you read, they're going to tell you, you cannot serve God and mammon both. It is more difficult for a rich man to get to heaven, and this is, I use biblical a lot because we live in the West and Christianity is something that everybody's familiar with. It is more difficult for a rich man to get to heaven than it is for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. That's straight out of the book. I think it's word for word. The material aspects People, I have good friends that became wealthy by accident and then are suddenly worried about losing what they've achieved. And they become so worried about losing what they have that they can't focus on their spiritual growth. 
Now, I must say, I must say, I also have a couple of students that are multimillionaires that basically achieved it, their own hard work, they didn't inherit it, and they still do fine. They still do fine. It is not important to them. It's there, but it's not important to it. They use it as much to help others as anything else. But there is such a thing as being so wealthy you can't spend it. And one of my people are like that. I mean, they're so wealthy, they can't spend it. You, you know, I mean, once, I, I mean, they're so wealthy they can't spend it. You know, sort of like that Warren Buffett or T. Warren Pickett. I mean, they couldn't spend their money if they wanted to. It accum accumulates faster than they can spend it. And it's possible to be there and pass through that eye of the needle. It's just very difficult. And what the concept of this card is, is that there is nothing wrong with having things. But if you allow the things to dominate your space, if you allow the things to dominate your space, then it is very, very difficult to achieve contacts with that concept of higher self. Very, very difficult. Little Megan here, she went down to Nicaragua, uh, well, it's been a few weeks. And uh, I kept telling her before she went down there, get a taser, get a taser, you know, get a stun gun. And she got a couple of them, but then she didn't take them with her. And she got down there, and... Uh, you know, she's got a maid. <laughs> 24 year old kid. She shows up and goes to work, and they make her bed, and they ask her what she wants to eat. <laughs> so she didn't need a stun gun. But, you know, I think of the third world Central America. She's about five foot tall, cute as a little button, and I worry about people molesting her, and I was worried about her getting taken advantage of. You see? But she did it without fear, and she did better in this than if she would have took it with her, see? That's the concept. So, when you deal with that movement into the astral side, and he mentions in there, you know, teachers, initiators, boom, 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 boom. But he constantly emphasizes, he constantly emphasizes the most important thing, any individual that wants badly enough and focuses strongly enough on finding it can do it without any help. Any individual can do it without any help. Now, he deals pretty formally uh, with the reincarnation concepts and stuff, but uh, He's dealing with the time spatial evolution of consciousness. You can do it yourself. You can go quicker if you've got the right person helping you. Any religious philosophy will get you there. I don't care if it's Christianity, Islam. Actually, uh, Kelly's last paper was written on the rise of Islam and whatnot and stuff like that that uh, I'm hoping to read this evening. There is nothing stopping you from achieving it. Once you achieve that astral connection, that's where you start achieving your auric and telepathic connections, the way he deals with it. The objective is to remove fear from your space. and to remove judgment from your space. Not to want to be better than anyone else. But by the same token, not accepting something that is violative to your own astrosome. 
see? We say no judgment. But if you see someone robbing someone, you're supposed to do what you can to stop that. If you see someone abusing someone, you're supposed to do what you can to stop that. And trying to define that difference between stopping that and judgment is pretty different. But there is a difference. There is a difference. If you were sitting in that theater in Colorado or that temple in Wisconsin and happened to be carrying and an individual started shooting, if you shot him, that's not a judgment. You see, there's, there's a fine line in there. And those are the fine lines that the hermit, that this hat is actually trying to teach you. Refine that line. You have to refine that line. When your septic tank broke uh, a few weeks ago, Nancy, uh, you're, you're not supposed to say, oh, my septic system's messed up. God must want that. You're supposed to fix it. <laughs> do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? There's a, there's a fine, determinate line that's constantly there. That, that works. The one, thing, the one thing you want to remember in dealing when you're doing the numerology aspects of it, the numbers, remember where he did 324, 234? Remember that? Okay? And then he said, now you ought to be able to figure out what to do now to make this special connection work. See, he did 324, then he did 234. Now there are only a few more permutations left of that. And if you can work out the right one. Beth Gimel Dallas. Dallas Gimel Beth. Dallas Beth Gimel. I mean, if, if you play with those concepts right in there, there is a trick in there that allows you to enter in to a nice meditate, almost like a very, very deep prayer or like a yogi doing his kundalini. That concept that he's trying to give you in there, if you can achieve that, you can almost instantly remove other concerns from your head while you're trying to pray or meditate. That's what he was talking about. When he did the 324, okay, I was dealing with that concept in the book where he goes three, okay, three, remember three, right? Gimel, Gimel, you know. The, the Trinity, the first family, the third part of the first family, okay? Two, Beth, the feminine part, and four, four, Dallas, you know, the actual progeny, the breastfeeding man, the nurturer, see? So he starts off three, two, four. All other equations, he either got high, low, low, high. This is his first triple trinary equation. But he didn't do two three four or four three two. He did three two four. And then he did two three four. And then he told you if you can figure out the proper remaining permutation, it would put you in an immediate meditative state. So it's sort of like if if, if you look at it from the prayer point of view. You know, uh, prayer isn't sitting down going, Ah, oh, Father, what in heaven, bum, 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 and just saying it real quick to get it out of the way because you've got to say it before you go to bed at night. I mean, that's, that's not a prayer. Uh, uh, God does not appreciate lip service. Prayer is when you're meaning it, when it's the only thing in your head. Just like meditation, the difference between meditation 
concentration. Remember? See? So, he's giving you a way to figure out a formula that will, when you decide to pray, decide to meditate, can immediately enter that space. And so that's the quiz for this week. What is the proper permutation? And it's a ternary. It's three numbers. It's three numbers. What is the proper one? So that's, that's, that's our quiz for this week. Any questions? Questions, questions, questions. On half. Nancy? Sure, but uh, yes. Yes, on the blog. You already figure it out? Okay. Give it... I'm going to tell you, test it first. Test it. Play with it for a day. I wouldn't be surprised... I wouldn't be surprised if you did it. Play with it for a day, but answer it on the blog. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? 